Hey guys, what's up? In this video I will show you how to do high tier solo dungeons whilst being on a budget. Many of you have asked for this video and to keep it as real as possible, this video is done in one take. Other than speed ups throughout the video, which I will indicate there is no other editing. So let's first take a look at my gear. As you can see I wear a tier 4.1 set. The build I'm using consists of a scholar cowl, a stalker jacket, the cheapest leather shoes I could buy and a grey tax. My cape is a regular one since we are trying to keep it as cheap as possible. I have a tier 4 bag, a set of PvP food and potion in case I get ganked, and a stack of potion pots for the bosses, as well as two soups for the dungeon runs. As you can see, my Great Axe Mastery is at level 3, and all specializations are either at 0 or 1, meaning I have no spec in it and your damage output should be on par with mine, if you decide to run solo dungeons under the very same circumstances. Let's go over the price for this very same set together. As you can see, that's 8k for the stack of potion pots, another 8k for the two soups, 4k for the bag, 6k for the cow, another 6k for the cape, 14k for the stalker jacket, 11 for the great axe, 4 for the leather shoes, 3 for the omelette, 7 for the healing potion, and 51 for the tier 5 armored horse, making for a total of about 120k silver. Now that we have our items covered, we can start our adventure. First we go to the realm gate to access the black zone. For this video we will go to a tier 7 area in the black zone for two reasons. I honestly felt too lazy to go to a tier 8 area, as they are often many zones away. This video would also be double as long, and all the extra footage would only be of me walking from zone to zone. I don't want to bore myself with that, and I definitely don't want to bore you guys with that. After searching a little, it seems close to the northern portal in Fort Sterling, there is a tier 7 zone called White Bank Ridge, so that's where we will head to. I can either reach that zone by going northwest and then southwest, or take the tunnel on the southeast and go northwest. After you use the round gate and enter the black zone, you want to dismount and take the shrine. This will make you fully invisible within the first zone. Always take this buff as there really is no reason not to. When you have this buff, you cannot be seen or attacked by enemy players, so you can safely exit the first map. Keep in mind, the shrine does have a cooldown. You probably noticed the tier 5 armored horse was almost half the set's worth, but I really feel like it's the minimum you should have if you go into the black zone. It's definitely worth the extra silver for the protection it offers. Gankers often are near the road and exit, so try to stick to the sides. Ok guys, now that we are in White Bank Ridge, we want to decrease our chances of getting dived by looking for solo dungeons in the right part of the map. As there are exits to the map on the northeast, northwest and southeast, this means we want to stick to the southwest part of the map. I passed the solo dungeon here but I feel like it's too close to the road, so I just go more south to find another one. If you want to spend less time on finding dungeons, you can simply use dungeon maps, but these will bring you to random areas and be more difficult on top of having to pay additional silver for them. So here is a solo dungeon at the southern part of the map, which is ideal for us. Now that we are in the dungeon, we want to use our soup and equip our PvP food after. I always skip the first three mobs as lazy gankers often don't bother checking if they see the first three mobs are up. So I kill a couple mobs here and as you can see both the fame and silver are pretty good. I didn't keep track of how much silver I got but to check the fame gained I open stats and see that my current fame for killing mobs is 70 million and 483k. We will take another look at this stat towards the end of this dungeon to see how much fame we gained. As covered in my previous video about solo dungeons, you always want to pick up the shrines as the buffs benefit you a lot, and you do not want to give the shrine advantage to dungeon divers. Now keep in mind I do have some specs in armor, which I will show somewhere later in this video, but it really isn't anything special. As you can see, I kill the monsters in this tier 7 dungeon pretty fast with this 4.1 build, and don't take too much damage as long as I don't make mistakes. 
I do have to say that this was the first time I did a dungeon of this tier with this type of equipment. I haven't used a specific build in a long while and had to get used to it again, so I took far more damage and also cleared slower than what this specific setup is capable of. Since my Axe Mastery is only level 3, I didn't unlock the Raging Blade skill yet, which you get at level 70. Once you get the Raging Blade skill, you'll clear solo dungeons even faster with this build. I didn't want to spec my Axe Mastery to 70 for this video, as I wanted to keep the entry level as low as possible, so everyone watching this video can see for themselves you can really do higher tier dungeons with just a cheap 4.1 set and no masteries or specializations. Other than the second skill on the Great Axe, you wouldn't have to change anything about this build. But that doesn't mean you can't. There are a few changes you could make to this build which are completely viable and cheap as well. If you want more sustain and trade for less damage, you can swap out the Stalk Jacket for the Imaginary Jacket. If you want a better chance of escaping for when you are to get dived, you can change your leather boots for Scholar Sandals. If you want even more damage, you could change your Scholar Cowl to Stalker Hood, although you might have some energy issues if you do so. When engaging on mobs with this build, you want to start off with your Q skill. This will apply bleed to all monsters and get your DPS going. Try to build as many stacks of bleed as you can during your fights. Use your W to modify the damage of your E and R skill. Use these two when the mobs are grouped up properly and you hit all of them. Your Scholar Cow provides energy when you get hit, but it also increases your resistances. So if you find yourself in a situation you need more defense, just use the Scholar Cow for that purpose. As for your Refreshing Sprint, which is a skill you can select on any of the leather boots, it reduces your cooldown slightly whilst providing a movement speed boost. Try to use this skill as often as possible to speed up your run. I noticed throughout my runs I really used the Refreshing Sprint far too little, so the tip in this really is not to be greedy with your cooldowns, which I kind of was during these runs. Whilst finishing this dungeon run I would like to fill this empty part of my script by sharing my weekly announcement. The Levy Discord server exists and is there to form a community together where we can help each other improve and have fun amongst other things. We also started a guild in Albion Online within the Levy Discord server called Digital Nerds, which already reached a total of 50 members. Anyone is welcome to join the Levy Discord server, and if you wish to join the guild simply read the recruitment channel. I also want to say a big thanks for all the support so far. It'd be the various compliments on the videos, all the tips and ideas you guys share with me for me to use in the content, and all the help you guys provide to one another, including me. I wouldn't have been able to do this with this much motivation and joy if it wasn't for all of you. The first solo dungeon was 3 floors and took a while. You can see my soup has one third remaining at the end, meaning it took me about 20 minutes. Could have done it in 15 minutes easily if I was more used to this build and had raging blades. I ended up with 70 million and 626k fame for killing mobs, meaning I got about 150k fame from this dungeon run, which is about 50k per floor. This particular dungeon was a pretty big one, so I do feel like the fame gained was above the average per floor for a tier 7 dungeon. I would guess the average per floor to be closer to 40k fame.
Now that I finished my first solo dungeon, I go looking for a second one, still on the southwest part of the map and run into this mob camp. Very tempting to kill as it's simply good silver, but it would increase my chances of getting ganked, as enemies would know someone was here recently. So I go in the dungeon and check my mob fame again to see how much fame we will get from this run. However, as I get to editing this video, I realize I never checked what the final fame was. I already feel more used to this build and for my feeling, this run goes much smoother than the first one. I do accidentally lure the boss at the end, whilst I just wanted the one mob, but decide I can probably kill the boss without having to reset, so I go for it. I must say though, this might not be the best decision, since there is a risk of being dived any moment, and like this, I'm just a free kill. Only one floor in this dungeon, so I finish it before my soup runs out. All in all, it seems I did two solo dungeons for a total of four floors in half an hour. Unfortunately, nothing good from the final chest. Once outside, I realize the camp is still up and I want to summon my mount so that if I see any rats, I can easily escape. I do have to reposition it so that I don't walk out of its range and it desummons. I do end up walking out of the mount's range eventually, so that was basically all for nothing, but yeah. As you can see, these mobs give some pretty good fame and silver, and as RNG strikes, I get a 7.1 soldier armor, right before I plan to head back to the town. The silver I picked up from the boss is a total of 11.7k, and that was basically why I killed it. Whenever I have the chance, I always make sure to kill these mob camps, as they provide really good value for the time it makes to clear them. Now that our adventure has come to an end, I mount up again and head back to Fort Sterling. Of course, we have to be careful of gankers on the way so we can secure our loot. Once I got back in town you can see I got 97k from silver bags alone. The items I got from the two dungeon runs add up to 138k, making for a total of 235k silver in value. I don't know how much silver I picked up during those two dungeon runs, but I would assume about 25k, which puts it on a total of 260k silver gains from the two dungeons. The soldier armor that dropped from the mob camp is worth 161k, and I also picked up about 13k from the mobs for a total of 174k silver from the mob camp. So in total I got about 200k fame and 430k silver. To close things off I go through my destiny board once again, and as you can see my axe fighter leveled from 3 to 12 and great axe went from 1 to 5. As for my armors you can see for yourself. Like I said before, nothing crazy. 
And that's basically how you run high tier solo dungeons on a budget. Many of you did ask for this video, so I hope it provides the value you are looking for. If you want to know more about solo dungeons, check out my other video, which provides in-depth information. The link to that video will be in the description below. For my next video I will be covering a bunch of solo dungeon builds for you to choose from. If you have any solo dungeon build suggestions, leave them in the comments and maybe I'll cover yours in the next video as well. As always, I wish you guys good luck in your adventures, and I hope to see you guys on my Discord server soon.